Thank you. Thank God for being here today. And um, come out to worship the Lord and to, to praise him and to hear his word. See, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? Right? So we have to, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship between the preacher and uh, the congregation. Right? The, the congregation needs the preacher because they can't hear without a preacher. And how can he preach except he be sent? So I thank God that uh, you are here doing your part. Hopefully you're going to do your part. Uh, you're doing your part to hear. And I'm going to do my part to, to give knowledge. Amen. To give knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. To feed you all with knowledge. As it says in Jeremiah, it talks about he gave some to pastors and and uh, for the, well, let's just read that right from the, let's just go into reading that Thank here, you, Lord. so you can have an understanding of a pastor's role. See, a pastor has different roles. They have a role of a of a. Uh, they have roles of a of, of a counselor to where they have to counsel. They have roles of being a mediator between uh, congregational members. Maybe they have people have odds with one another. You all maybe see that um, people might have odds one towards another. This congregational member may not be speaking to this other congregational member and. He got to mediate between the two and find out who's the wrongful party. Uh, that's a role of a pastor. Role of a pastor is also one that uh, that takes place outside of the church too. If if he has a congregational member that's needing assistance, needing prayer, have to go to the hospital, maybe have to go to the home of the individual, have to uh, meet with individuals outside of church time and church hours. That's a part of a a pastor's role. Amen. Right. So pastor has so many different and then obviously we all we all know the pastor's role on Sunday delivering the ser the Sunday sermon, which is quite obvious what a lot of people realize that a pastor does. And also the pastor is also instrumental in taking care of the needs of the community and the needs of his congregation. Uh, as we were just talking about not too long ago about our fast offering. So uh so we know a pastor has multiple roles, but I want to read to you in uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 and give you an understanding. Uh, read what the, word, what the Word of God had to say about <coughs> pastors. About pastors. And I will give, this is Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. According to God's heart. He's going to give pastors according to his heart. Yeah. Said, I will give, yeah, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. It's not on the outline. I have a lot of different verses that I didn't even put on the outline. But I'm going to reference them and may even turn to some of them. That's not on the uh, text outline. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. See, that's what a pastor, that's what a pastor's role is. A pastor's role is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Because we don't always have that knowledge or understanding all the time, right? Some people, they, they, they misinterpret things. They don't quite understand uh, what's going on. And so they, 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 uh, they, they're misguided. They're misguided. The Bible even talks about misguided individuals where, he talk, where it was talking about an act, the Ethiopian eunuch, who Philip had to expound the word of God to. So we do know that... Um, that's what a pastor's role is. And so that's what we're going to do today is to, 
to give you knowledge and understanding. That's what I'm endeavoring to do today with the Lord's help to give you knowledge and understanding. And if you see the title behind me, it says, Know Your Enemy. Now, what enemy am I talking about? Am I talking about the enemy that you have on the job? Am I talking about the enemy that you may have in your community? Am I talking about the enemy that you may came across in the grocery store? Am I talking about your high school rival enemy? I am talking about all of them, but I'm particularly talking about the devil who works through them individuals. Right? Because anyone who is up to no good is underneath the influence of Satan. That's just plain and simple. You can't, you can't slice it or dice it any other way. You're under the control of Satan. And you even have to watch yourself even because you could be walking for God and lo and behold, Satan got a hold of you. Because remember Jesus said, who did they say I am? And Peter said, thou art the son of the living God. And he said, he said, you know, and then Jesus was well, he was pleased with that. And he said, on this rock shall I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then Jesus was telling them what's going to happen to me to where they're going to take me and I'm going to, my, my life is going to be taken and, and all this. And Peter said, not so, Jesus, not so. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, I rebuke you, Satan. You're an offense to me. <laughs> one, day he was a, one time he was pleased with him. The other time he's rebuking him. So that shows you that Satan can move in individuals and he can move in them quickly. Quickly. So I want you to be under, I want you to have that understanding. Again, my job is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Because sometimes you may look at a person and say, they've been walking with God. So it must be God, but Jesus was walking with them too. But he said, you know, he rebuked him. He said, thou art offense to me, Satan. However, I will say this to the credit of somebody who's walking with God now. Peter didn't have the Holy Ghost then. So, you know, I mean, hopefully someone who has the Holy Ghost is going to let that Holy Ghost lead and guide where they don't allow Satan to come in. But you may see somebody out there who, who professes Christ, who professes it and says, I'm a believer. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And lo and behold, you hear them saying some good things about Jesus one moment. <laughs> and then the other moment you may hear them say some things that's far from Christ. <laughs> so just to keep you aware of that, sometimes we like to, man, did you hear what they said? They were talking about Jesus. And we're, and we're quick to say, woo, we got a brother and sister. But you may have to look a little further. The Bible says, know those that labor among you, right? All right, so let's go ahead and, and, and go into this sermon here. So know your enemy. And we got to understand our enemy comes, in, it takes all different shapes and forms. Now, I know we used to watch um, the X-Men, and, and they had a, ca a character on the X-Men that could uh, shape form or take uh, or could transform into other individuals. I forget the name. What's the name of that character? Mystique. Mystic. Mystic. Mystique. 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 Could take the form of different people. And I want you to look like Satan can. That's like Satan. Satan could take the form. He could jump into different individuals that will allow him. He could jump into different. He can get you through different things that you're using through your car through your through your phone, through your iPad, he can, he can, through your TV, he can transform into these things. He can, he can get you to, to use those things incorrectly. He can transform, he can go into individuals that can cause you trials and, and, can, and, and that, can, that can cause you problems and that can, like, that, can tip, that can even tempt you to lead you away, even. Right? From following after Christ. So I want you to understand that, you know, so when we're talking about Satan, we're talking about 
the power of Satan working through individuals and through things to get you the lust after things, to get you the lust after individuals. Right? So we are listening, you know, you know, there's many people out there that are listening to, to the agents of Satan. Right? You may not see Satan in the exact form in his physical person because he's a spirit too. Right? But people are listening to the agents of Satan. They're, they're, they're listening to people who Satan's working through. They're listening to the TV shows that they shouldn't be that they shouldn't be watching. They're watching these TV shows. They're listening to music in certain words and certain lyrics that they shouldn't be in, which Satan's all up in. Right? So, I mean, you, I mean, it's it's obvious, it's evident. This and some of the songs sound good. They may sound good to you, the way you say, man, that sounds good. The melody is on. The beat's phenomenal. Man, this thing is jumping. But you gotta, you gotta go beyond. That's how Satan's hooking you. He's making it sound good. That's right. This one song that that you know people used to get down to, right? Used to love it, and, and they're getting down to it, probably doing a lot of sin with it, though. But you know, that song's coming on, "Secret Lover." What in the world are you talking about, a secret lover? Right? Why well, gotta be a secret lover? You know what I mean? What's going on? And then the other song was like, another song people used to get down to because it sounded good. Me and Mrs. Jones, we got a thing going on. What you? <laughs> no, we have no business participating in them kind of songs. Right? No, not at all. The, it, it, what, what is it representing? You know? <coughs> You know, so what we got to realize is that not every song, just because it's sung well and it sounds good and it has a good beat, is meant for us to listen to. Right? It's not meant for that. Right? But, you know, them things are constantly Satan sending his messages through people or through things that are trying to convince us. And this is what's going on. They said, know your enemy. Sending messages through people or through things that are trying to convince us that the other side is better. Better than what we got going on. Better than what we're doing. They're trying to, you know, let it seem like that what they're doing is better than what we're doing. So that means people who are going out to the clubs and, and going out and drinking and carrying on, they're trying to portray how happy they are doing that. And you're sitting there saying, man, you know what? Look at me, I'm just sitting at home with nothing to do. Your life seems like this moment's more exciting than me. Look at all the people they got around them, right? Look at all this. But you got to understand, everything is not as it seems, right? But uh, I'm not going to even get into that right now, but everything's not as it seems. Preach, Bishop. Everything's not as it seems. Amen. You got to ask yourself, why are they doing that from the start? Maybe because they don't got a good home life. So they're trying to get it any way they can. Right, but again, not getting into that part quite yet. Just no, we're not there yet. But they're trying to convince us that the other side is better, that the other side is having more fun, that the other side is making more money, that the other side has better relationships. They're trying to they're trying to say that everything is better than what than what we have. But let me ask you all, if anybody can tell me this, tell me, how do we know, how do we know if the other side's better? How would it look like the other side even, how would we even be aware that the other side even looks better? How would we be aware of that, right? And if you don't have it, I'll, I'll, answer, it as it, as it was a, I'll answer it as it was a rhetorical question. I'll answer it. The reason why we know or we think that it's better, the reason I say it's the reason why we say we think it's better, because it's not better, the reason why we think it's better is simply because we were we became aware of it. We became aware of it. We, we were looking at it. We were handling it. We became aware of it. If you get somebody who is in a remote country somewhere, who don't have access to internet or anything like that, the only thing they, they know is 
with the, this, within your community, you're not thinking about half the stuff that you're thinking about. Real talk. It's just real talk. They're not thinking about half the stuff. Right? They're not involved with half the stuff. Right? So what we got to ask, what we got to tell ourselves is simply, it's because we became aware of it. Became in our, it, it came up close. It smacked us in the face almost. It's boom, it's right there. We're bombarded with it. When you turn around, it's right there. 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 But no wonder why Jesus said, I wish not to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evils of it. And we got to keep ourselves from the evil. You got to safeguard yourself. You got to realize whenever something is working upon you, no matter how good it looks, no matter how good it sounds, you got to be aware of it. You have to be aware of what's going on. There's a saying, there used to be a saying in the world, if it sounds too good to be true, then it's probably too good to be true. Right? And so we got to be aware of that sometime. Right? And so you, we got to be aware of, of, of all the, the, the propaganda that Satan's trying to throw up. He's, 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 he's doing a good job of selling sin. Doing a real good job. He packages it up marvelously. I'm telling you, <coughs> Satan packages sin up marvelously. He makes it seem like it's all that. But when it comes down to it, if it's all that, why are people dying over sin? No wonder. The Bible was wrote many, 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 many years, years, years ago. And it says the wages of sin is death. And if you look at it, it's true. Look at what unlawful sexual activity brings about. It brings about death through STDs, right? Sexually transmitted disease. It brings about death through bringing children into this world that's not what it, and then that mother decides to go to an abortion clinic and kills it. It brings about death. It brings about death where now this guy who thought he was just having a good time, his, his, he's like now he's paying child support, at least to the child at least 18 years old. It's bringing death. It brings about death. But that's what sin, but Satan doesn't present it to you like that. He presents it to you and like, man, look at how fine she is. He, he dresses that sinful package up, man. He, he man, he can sell sin. He is a, he's a, you know, Satan's not good at anything, but he's good at sin. And he's good at selling it. He's good at deceiving people about it, too. Preach business. Right? But, you know, people, some people, they don't listen to it. It turns on a deaf ear until they're in that sin. And then they're like, man, how did I get here? My, my life is horrible. I should have listened to the pastor. I should have listened to my mother. I should have listened to my dad. How did I get in this, this state of being? How did I get here? How did I get here? How did I get here? Because you were looking at the world more, you were spending more time with the world than you were spending with Jesus. You were spending, because how else could you, how else could you live that out, the prayer that Jesus had prayed? How else could you live it out when he said, I wish not to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evils of the world? How else could you live that out? In other words, the way to live that out is by engulfing yourself in God, staying around godly people, doing godly things, praying all the time, reading your Bible, fasting, that's the only way that you're going to be able to do it. You can't stop. Do, you cannot do them things and think that you're going to stay away from the evils of the world. You just can't do it. Right? You can't do it. You just can't do that kind of, them kind of things. So what I'm urging you, I'm going to go ahead and switch, switch mics here. So what I'm urging you to do is I'm saying that you know, you have to do them things because you can't, can, you're not strong to deal with Satan. If you're not praying, if you're not reading your Bible, if you're not having good fellowship with Christians, if you're not, you know, fasting, if, you know, if you're not doing these kinds of things, you're going out to Satan exposed and weak. And you're not going to be able to handle it. You're just not going to be able to do that. So what I urge you to do, what I urge you it's saying simply is you have to do those things. You have to make sure that your spiritual life is strong so you don't fall in to what Satan is trying to present to you because he's making it look marvelous. I mean, I'm telling you, 
He's making it look great. He's doing a good job at selling sin. And it's like this. If you're not aware of it, he'll sell you. Amen. And you'll be had. Right? And let's go ahead. Let's, let's turn to the, to the word of God here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. I only have basically uh, what I have. Uh, two outlines here, but I have some other things we're going to turn to. All right, so some of you might think, oh, we're going to get out of here early, but you should know whenever I only have two outlines, sometimes that's whenever, two texts, that's whenever we're actually kind of the longest, whenever I have uh, not that many up here. But let's go ahead and um, dig into the Word of God. In uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, have God said, hold on, I think that I'm cut off here, so I'm going to go ahead and actually get it from the Bible here. Because I'm cut. Just bear with me as I get it real quick. Thank you there, Brittany. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. See, now why would he come about that? Because he knows that what, that's what God has said. He knows that's what God has said. Right? He knows that's what God has said. And see, I don't like snakes. There's a lot of people like that like snakes. But see, there's a history for not liking snakes. And this is the history right here. See, there's, there's a history, and this is the history we're going to read. Right? The devil worked through that old serpent, Satan. And that serpent was cursed as a result of it. And verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree, of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now that serpent knew that that's what God said. Why would he, why would he bring, why would he talk about what God told them that they couldn't do? Why would he, why would he bring that up? Why would he bring that up? Have God said. He's trying to start some trouble, right? Call that back in the day, instigator. Trying to instigate. Right? He know what God said. Why are you bringing up what God said? Preach. Yeah, we know what God said. <laughs> right? Right? Now, let's read on. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath, God hath said, Ye shall not, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. They couldn't even touch it, let alone eat it. Couldn't even touch it, let alone eat off of it. Now, you got to understand something. I want you to understand. I want you to understand. See, God is, he's opening up something here. I didn't have this before I came in. I didn't have what I'm ready to tell you as I came in. God is opening this up, so pay attention. If you look at where they were at, Adam and Eve, they were in a paradise. Everything was provided for them. God had provided everything for them. God did. Everything, food, beautiful, everything's beautiful there. Everything's beautiful. And lo and behold, someone came along to cause some trouble made them think about something else is better than what God had provided for them. Somebody came along to make them think that something was else was better than what God had provided for them. He provided a beautiful place for them. That's what God's doing for us now. He, he has everything that we need, everything that we need possible, and we're looking out at the world and looking at what the world is. 
the sin of the world, looking at the sin of the world, looking at what the world has to offer, and we want that compared to everything that God has for us. Just like, just like that garden. That garden was beautiful. They gave up that whole garden for a piece of fruit about that big, probably. <laughs> they gave that whole garden up for a piece of fruit about this big. That would seem ridiculous to us, wouldn't it? That would seem almost like somebody didn't have their right mind. I mean, come on now, really? That's, that would seem like somebody had their, that's like me saying, I, I know Reggie's in the car, say, Reggie, I got this really, really nice steering wheel. You give me all your, you give me your truck outside. <laughs> He's like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. <laughs> He's crazy, right? That would be crazy. Would that, would that be crazy? That would be crazy. <laughs> but that's what, that's what it was like in that garden. Yeah. They looked at the one fruit off of the tree. They got all this other stuff over here. Right? <laughs> and they're concerned about that one. <laughs> I like that. Just, just put, a, put, a, put a sheet over that thing. I don't want to look at it. You know what I mean? I don't want to be tempted. Just, just put a sheet over that thing. Right? I don't want to look at it. Put a wall up on that. But that's what goes on. If you need to adjust me, you go ahead and adjust if it's something wrong. Right? But thank but I but I uh, but that's what I want you to understand. But that's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that uh, that's how that's how sin is. That's how sin. That's how sin goes. Do you understand me? Sin don't make sense. It's making sense to you who are, who's involved in the sin. It's making sense to you who's involved in it. It makes sense. Because you're sitting there, only thing you can see is what's going on at that time. That's the only thing you can see. So it's making sense to you. But whenever other people see it, it's like, man. They gave their life up for this. It's like I, I, I'll bring something modern day. I'll bring something that's modern day. Preach, Bishop. Drugs. There will be a guy that probably have a good job, a nice family, children, and lose it all for a drug that he should have. He knew he shouldn't have took it in the first place. So yeah, he got hooked, but he had everything going for himself. And lose everything for a drug. That's how sin, the wages of sin is death. Like I said, God knew it. He said it a long time ago. The wages of sin is death. But we got to know the enemy. You have to know him. You got to know that he's trying to make things look really, really good. Yes. Right? Trying to make it look good. He's not making it look bad. Because if it look bad, who's going to want it? <laughs> who's going to want something that looks bad? You just want to walk on past that on that old raggedy thing right there. I'm just going to walk on past. You want to walk past that, but something that looks great, you're like, man, that looks pretty good right there. Amen. Right? So yeah. So be aware. Everything that looks beautiful isn't good for you. <laughs> Everything that looks beautiful is not good for you. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, First lady, sister, pastor said everything that shines is not gold. Right? It doesn't mean that it's good. That's right. It doesn't, doesn't mean that it's good. So let's read on here. I think I left off at verse 4. Verse 5. For God doth know. See, listen to this. Oh, deceiver. For God doth know that in it, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods. Now was that was, was that a lie? That wasn't a lie. That was not a lie. That was true. That was true. But see, that's how Satan does. He, that's what he makes. He makes things look good. And he makes it sound good because he makes things seem so believable to where you'll do them. So now, that was true. That was true. Right? And if you read on, you hear God acknowledge that that was true. Right? And I'll, I'll, I'll read, I'll, I'll go on and read that part where God acknowledges that that part was true. 
right? But the part that was a lie was, let's go back to it. The part was a lie, knowing good and evil. So that finishes that verse, right? But he said, but the part was a lie. He said that they would not die. You shall not surely die. That was our verse four. You shall not surely die. That was a lie, right? Verse six. And when the woman saw the tree, see, listen to this. I want you to pay attention to this. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so it seemed like he had opened her eyes. Pay attention to the text. It seemed like he had opened her eyes to realize that that tree was good for food. Now get this. Now let's just read on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye. See, see what I mean? See, she, she heard his talk. She heard his talk. Then she's looking at the tree. Oh, man, that tree does look pretty good. That tree looks good, and it looks good for food. And let's see what happens. And uh, we all know the story, right? We all know the story. It was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired. Why is it a tree to be desired? Because of what he said. You're going to be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your eyes are going to be open. Right? A tree to be desired. Just because you desire something don't mean that it's good for you again. Remember that. Just because you want something, you desire something, don't mean that it's good for you. Right? Don't mean that it's good for you. It may taste good. It may look good. It may sound good. But it don't mean that it's good for you. It says, a tree to be desired, to make one wise. See, she even quoted, she even went back to what he was saying, didn't she? She even went back to what he was saying. To make one wise is desired. Tree to be desired, to make one wise. Wow. Well, listen to the devil. The devil didn't put her in that garden. The devil didn't form her. The devil didn't make the man that she came from. He didn't do that, but she's listening to the devil. She's listening to the devil. We ought not to listen to the devil today. We ought not to listen to the devil. We have a God that has given us everything we need. We don't need what the devil's trying to present to us. We don't need it. Right? And so, so let's read on here. A tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Wow, that, that's amazing. Just going to read on where God had acknowledged that. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. God among the trees of the garden. Did you find that verse? You said you. Okay, verse twenty-two. The first lady had said, and it reads, "And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us." See, Satan wasn't lying then. Said he said, "And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil." And that's when God had to go to work. And now let us put forth his hand. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Right? See, now God had to go to work. God had to put him out. God had to take him out of that garden now. And had to protect that garden from ever being able to go in. Now we hear people talking about they found the fountain of youth and these different things. We hear words about the fountain of youth and, and what have you. But we got to realize that they had it good. They had it good there. They messed up a good thing. Sometimes that's saying you don't, you, you, uh, you'll miss a good thing when it's gone. Right? Right? And, and, and they, they had it good. They really truly did. And we have it good right now. Right? I, we have it good. But sometimes we're so crowded, we're so we're too busy listening to what Satan's telling us what success is, what we need to have, yeah. 
where we need to be at this point in our life, what uh, we're not doing that's good that other people are doing. And we're too busy listening to what Satan's saying. And instead of agreeing what Satan is saying, we should be praising God more and asking God for help. To have, asking God to deliver us. Helping God, asking God to elevate us. Because if it's something that's good, every good gift, every good gift, every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Every good gift, every perfect gift. So if it's something that's going to be good for you, God has it. All right, so let's go ahead and turn to Luke here. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 21. I'm hoping that is good on my, on my sheets that I printed out because my sheets are bigger print to this little Bible that Brittany gave me. <laughs> so I'm hoping it is okay. But thank God Brittany gave it to me because I didn't mind it have it all on this. I don't know what had happened there. And um, so Luke 15, verses 11 through 21. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riot its living. Now, this is what I want you to understand. Before I move on, I might not even read any more of this. I might just tell you about it. This is what I want you to understand. See, this is kind of what happens. What I'm going to talk to you about is what happens after uh, you fall into the consequences of listening to Satan. After you fall into the consequences of li listening to Satan, that's when your eyes see the devastation. You're like, oh my goodness. Look at what I did. Look at where I'm at right now. I can't believe that I'm where I'm at right now. Right? I want to share something with you. The first lady had told me that, um, that it was a survivor. Very few people who jumped from this bridge survived. Right? But there have been some survivors. And every one of the survivors from this bridge that they jumped from, instantaneously after they jumped from that bridge, had regrets. Regrets. Instantaneously, while they were falling, as they jumped from that bridge, they had regrets. They had regrets. I'm going to share something with you as far as my life as being a therapist. I remember a gentleman that I got a report from. He was a patient of mine. Right? And they said that he had, I guess, cut himself. And I guess he came out into where people was asking for help, but he went too far. And he couldn't be saved. Right? So so the first lady was saying, everyone that jumped from this bridge had regrets. Everyone. Right? Because the devil may make you think that that's a good thing to do. You know what, man? You know, people here, they don't love you. They don't care about you. You're all by yourself. Look, you don't have anything to show for yourself. You know, you might as well just end it all. You know, just take yourself out of your misery. You might as well just, just end it all. And then as they jump, they regret it. They, he said, this guy said, I guess my wife said that this guy who survived went and found all the other survivors who had jumped. And they all had the same same story that they regretted it instantly. Instantly they regretted it. See, Satan can do a number on you. Right? Satan tries to get people to jump. You want to know how I know that? I know that for sure. I know, I know that without a doubt. Satan tries to get people to jump. He came to Jesus and said, cast thyself down from here. If thou the son of God, God gives his angels charge concerning thee to bear thee up, lest thy dash thy foot against the stone. Satan tried to get people to jump. He's the one on that bridge telling people to jump. He's the one that got on the walk to that bridge. That's not God. Right? Because we know God said he that destroyed this temple, God will destroy. Right? We gotta, he that defiled this temple, God will destroy. 
right? So we know that God's not about people defiling themselves and hurting themselves like that. That's not what God's about. So, so this situation about, they call this particular portion uh, of the word of God, the prodigal, they term it the prodigal son, right? And basically what this younger son had went off and did, he went and got, asked his dad for his money, his inheritance, his money, went to a far country, wasted his money on riot living, on loose women, on, you know, did different things, but then as a result, he fell off, he fell upon hard times. He fell upon hard times. And during them hard times, he came to his senses. Because that's what rock bottom does sometimes. Rock bottom's a great motivator to get back to where you are. Right? And so he fell, he so he fell, he he came to his senses and he realized and he said, you know. What am I doing right here? You know, what I mean, I'm working for I'm working for somebody, right? And I'm and I'm eating what pigs eat. I'm eating what the swine would eat. That's the food that he had to eat off of. This guy came from from a, a well-to-do family, right? He came from a well-to-do family, and he's eating what swine eat. That's what he's eating. That that's what he's eating. And so he came to himself. And the Bible actually said he came to himself. So that must have meant he must have been outside of his mind for a little because he came to himself, right? And he said that, you know, my father's hired servants eat better than I eat, and they have bread to spare. So his dad's hired servants lived like a king compared to the way he was living. He said, I'm going to go back to ask my dad to bring me on as his hired servant because they do, they're do they doing better than I'm doing. But see, that's after Satan had convinced you to do what you're doing. You fall into all these consequences. Right? And then this happens. Try to get to this stage. Try to have a humble mind. Try to have a godly mind before, it even, before you even get put into that position. Before that even happens. Try to have a humble mind. Try not to Try, try not to, uh, don't, not, not try not to, don't allow Satan to lure you away. Don't allow him to, to take you uh, away from God's graces. Don't allow that to happen. Amen. Don't allow it to be. Right? But some folks, they're, they're, too, they're too busy listening to what Satan's showing them. They're too busy listening to what Satan's saying to them. They're too busy looking at what Satan's showing them. And then they get took, they get taken away from it. They get taken away. So don't let that be you. Now, what we ought to be is we must believe God. Us that are children of God, we must believe God. Right? We don't need to be taken away. Right? No, no, don't take me out of the Garden of Eden. Don't take me out of the Garden of Eden where everything is lovely, where everything's beautiful. Right? I can have everything I want. I got 99% everything in here I can have. 99% of everything I can have. And I'm going to throw it away for 1%. No, I'm not going to throw, I'm not going to throw it away for 1%. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to throw it away for 1%. Amen. Right? But, but that's what Satan would do for us. That's what he, that's what he does for us. He tried to get you to throw 99% away for 1%. That's what he does. That's what he does. So we can't do that. And uh, so we must believe God. We must believe God that he has the best for his servants. I know it looks good out there, but like I said, that's a deception. That's like a snare. Like whenever you bait, whenever you bait a trap, when you bait a trap and you're looking for like to catch an animal, whether you're trying to eat them or you're just trying to destroy them because they're tearing your crop up or something. You put something good in that trap. You put something nice in that trap that that animal's going to want. You might have, you know, like some nice meat in there or something that, that, that looks good to that animal to, to lure them into that trap, right? And that's what Satan's doing. He, he's, he's putting something in there that's good, that's luring you into that trap, that's luring you into it, and pretty soon the door shut. The door shut, and it's too late. It's too late. So realize it for what it is, yeah. right? Realize it for what it is. 
So we must believe God. And that God has better for his servants. So I'm not going to look at what Satan's trying to present to me. I'm not going to look at it. Right? And, and get this. you got to really be clever, too, because we know sin. We know sin, right? And we've been talking about it different times with, uh, in Galatians 5. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, right? We talked that it goes on and labels out a whole lot of others. But now let me ask you this. Did it say making money? It didn't say making money, did it? But that could be where Satan might get you. Satan said, hey, you know what? Man, why don't you take this job, man? This job is awesome right here. You're making a lot of money. But that job's keeping you out of church on Sundays. That job's keeping you out of church. That job is keeping you away from your family, right? To where you're on the road now and you're away from your family. And that job's keeping you away from all of everything that really, really matters that's important. Now, the, now making money, now making money is not, it's not sinful, right? But it can lead you to sin. So now that guy's on the road. That guy's on the road. And as a result of him being on the road, he he's now because he's away from his wife. See, the Bible tells you, tells you things, right? It talks about, you know, asking for permission to uh, you know, for your for your spouse for fasting. For fasting and prayer, to give yourself to fasting and prayer. And then it says, when you're done, defraud not yourselves from one another, lest you be tempted. Now I'm going to give it to you in plain words. Whenever you're fasting and prayer, you're not having sexual relations with your wife or with your husband. You're giving yourself to fasting and prayer. And the, and, and the word of God is saying that when you're done with the fasting and prayer, Go and have sexual relations with your wife or with your husband so you don't get tempted by Satan and actually start being involved with other people and other things. Right? So we have to understand that. Right? Or, 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 or from the standpoint of where now the wife or the husband loses interest because, the, the, uh, because their spouse isn't, isn't showing them any attention. So now they go somewhere else. And lo and behold, you're, you're in, a, in a hot mess, so to speak. So we got to do it God's way. But what I'm telling you is that we know what sin is. But so, we, so it's like it's easy for us to try to turn down some of that, even though it may come and look beautiful and it may look nice. But you say, hey, man, you know, nah, I'm, not, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. But lo and behold, it may come through, it may come through the back door. It may come through the back door. It may come as a job opportunity. It may come as higher education opportunity. It may come, uh, you know, in another way. And you don't see it, but it is leading you into sin. So be aware of that. So we got to so we gotta make sure that we, we need to focus. We need to focus on the testimonies and the miracles and the wonders of God. We need, that's what we need to focus on. We need to keep our eyes on that. On that. The, the testimonies and the miracles and the wonders of God and stop believing the lies that Satan's trying to tell us. We need to stop doing We need to make sure that we're looking at things such as Psalms 37 and 4. Psalms 37 and 4, where it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart. We need, to, we need to focus on that, knowing that God will give us the desires of our heart. If we just wait on him, if we wait on God, he will give us the desires of our heart. We need to focus on them kind of things. That's what we need to focus on. All right? We need to focus on that. We need to focus on Matthew 6 and 33. Right? Matthew 6 and 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to be focused on that. Like I said, God has good things for his, for his servants. He has good things for his servants. Then we need to turn to, let's turn to, uh, let's turn to Jeremiah, right? We're going to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29, I believe. It's not on the outline here, so 
if you're not going to. We'll turn to Jeremiah 29, and I think it's verse 11. Let's see here. I think it's verse 11. 29, verse 11. Right? Let's see. Yes, it's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I have. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. It's God talking. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, to give you an expected end. Then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I will hearken unto you. This is God talking. Verse 13, I'm going to end it at. And ye, shall, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Right? So there, there. Then if we turn to, if we turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Get to Luke. Chapter 6 and verse 38. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 reads Give, see, it's got to do with God's way. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So if you want love, show much love. You want love, show much love. Right? If you if you if you if you want to receive substance, then give, give substance. Don't be stingy with what you got. Right? Invite people into your home. Give them a meal. You know, pay, you know what I mean? You see, you know, uh, uh, give, give of what you have. You may have little, but give of what you have. Give of what you have. Even if it is little, give it what you have. Because with the same measure you meet, wherewithal shall be uh, shall be measured to you again. So let's keep this in mind. Right? God has good things for his for his for his servants. He has good things for his servants. Good things for his servants. I mean good things he has for his servants. But we have to make sure. That we're doing God's will. We got to make sure that the Satan does that. We don't fall for his tricks or for his tactics. We don't fall for it. Don't care how much he dresses it up. How good he makes it look. We're not going to fall for it. Just not going to fall for it. And when we keep it that way. We can please the Lord. And he will bless us. We'll have the altar call now.